The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and as a pretext recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Praise the Lord. Uh, Just a few housekeeping uh, announcements before we dive into these beautiful, beautiful, powerful readings. If you notice, there's envelopes in many of the pews. So before you leave, uh, please grab one. And as hopefully, if I'm successful in my homily, it'll make more sense why we have these envelopes. Essentially, you have homework this weekend. And so that's why the envelopes are present. And then secondly, uh, make sure you grab one of those little printouts that we do for the readings. Uh, We transcribed a thank you letter again from one of the fire victims from the Dixie Fire that remember we, through your generosity, we've been able to to pass out pretty pretty substantial checks to these victims and they weren't expecting it. And so we got a thank you letter and I always want to, because it's written to you, it's never towards me because I didn't raise any of this money. So it's all of your money. And remember, we raised through your generosity forty-two thousand dollars. It's utterly amazing. And so these people <laughs> were, were surprised, to say the least, when they saw a check from you guys. So it's for you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So it was fun last Sunday. If you remember the great holiday that our nation celebrated, what did we celebrate? Remember, of course, Halloween. As like many of you, as you're driving around that evening last Sunday, you're just, you just see all the, all the kids and the families running around town trick-or-treating. And I always chuckle when I see that. I see all the kids dressed up, going door to door. I turn off my lights because I have no candy. You know, so I turn off my lights and I'm always hiding when they ring my doorbell. But I always giggle when I see the kids out there. Giggle in a very masculine way because uh, I look around and I said, wow, do these people realize they're behaving like good Catholics. All of them are behaving like good Catholics, whether they realize it or not. So Halloween, notice of all the different traditions that we now celebrate. Oh, it's deeply Catholic. So the dressing up, they put on the masks, they wear the costumes. That comes from our French Catholics. That custom comes over now, and which we've incorporated into our, our celebration. The notion of carving pumpkins, making funny faces, we get that from our Irish Catholics. But instead of pumpkins, they used to carve out of turnips. So that was the origin of the tradition. And how about going door to door asking for sweets? We get that from our English Catholics. Because before, instead of candy, they would actually bake a very special cake. And so, the, so, the, so they would go door to door, knocking on the doors, 
And so they would give them a cake in exchange for prayers. I'll pray for your beloved dead if you give me a piece of cake. And so they would go door to door. French Catholics costumes, parving of pumpkins, the Irish, and then going door to door from the English. And so now, as, as the immigrants started flooding the United States in the early part of our nation, and as we started celebrating Halloween, they started incorporating all of these Catholic practices. Ah, but it goes so much deeper now. Ask yourself, Halloween, it is on the eve of November 1st. In fact, that's where the name comes from. All Hallows Eve, Halloween, All Saints the night before November 1st. Why November 1st? Dedicated to all of the Catholic saints. You must now go back to the year 609. The reigning Pope is now a man by the name of Pope Boniface IV. Catholicism is now the official religion of the empire. We are firmly rooted and so, with Pope Boniface IV, if you go to Rome to this very day, the most best preserved building of ancient Rome is the Pantheon. Have anybody in here been to, the, to, been to Rome and seen that magnificent building, the Pantheon? It is utterly stunning. If you want to get an idea of how ancient Rome would have looked, go to the Pantheon. You walk in there, you might as well be in the first century. Is, is that stunning? and well-preserved. But before 609, the Pantheon, by its very name, was dedicated to all of the false gods of the empire. That name itself, Pantheon. Two Greek words, pan, meaning all, theon, meaning gods. So the Pantheon was this beautiful temple that the Romans had dedicated to all their false pagan gods. But now Christianity has taken root. And we tear down those pagan false gods. You see, for the ancient Christians, they didn't just see them as false gods, but they saw them as demons in disguise. And so we wanted to tear it down. And so on May 13th, Pope Boniface decreed that this temple will no longer be a symbol of the false gods of the empire but we're going to reclaim it. We tear down those statues, and now outside of the walls of Rome, what is outside there buried in these elaborate tunnels? We know them as the catacombs. Thousands upon thousands of graves of early Christians are buried outside of Rome in these tunnels. Because remember, before Christianity becomes the official religion of the empire, we buried our dead in these secret cemeteries. We would have mass in these secret tunnels, bury our beloved ones there. And so Pope Boniface said, bring in the bones of all of the martyrs and the saints buried in the catacombs. So they dug them all up out of the catacombs and they processed into this former pagan temple and we buried the martyrs and the saints from the first three centuries there. Because remember, if you're going to be a Catholic in the first three centuries, you better be ready to die. They hated us because we refused to behave like them. They say, hey, offer incense to the pagan gods. No. <laughs> and they shed their blood for it. So now we bring in the bodies of the saints. We bury them and we pull them into the, into, the, into the ground, into the altars of the pantheon. We tear down those fake temples, those fake images of these fake gods. And we reconsecrated the pantheon to the official name. It is now, if you go to Rome to this very day, you see this beautiful altar. It's always packed with tourists. It's, again, it is a magnificent example of Roman architecture. We rededicated that temple to the Blessed Mother, Queen of all the Martyrs and Saints. 
It is one of the oldest churches dedicated to our mother. May 13th, 609, all the saints are honored. But now you must be asking yourself, well, how does that relate to why now today we celebrate Halloween in November? Obviously, that's May 13th. Ah, now enter a couple centuries later. We are sending missionaries to what's now Northern Europe. Our missionaries are encountering the Germanic tribes, the Celtic peoples, the Anglo-Saxons, and the Irish. So modern day England, Ireland, Scotland, Germany, France. Our missionaries now are being sent through there. And as they encounter these new peoples, they're noticing a pattern. Of your answers, God, I bet you many of your, 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 your blood flows through one of these countries to this very day. So I'm speaking about your ancestors. So your ancestors during fall would become terrified. Because notice what happens during the fall. Notice the environment, what's happening. It gets dark, cold. The leaves change color. Everything begins to die. And so these pagan peoples of your ancestors saw this. And so they connected the changing of the seasons as everything gets dreary to death. And so now as our Catholic missionaries are spreading through these regions, they're noticing this pattern. And so in order to proclaim the good news of of Jesus Christ to these pagan peoples, the Pope now, who's reigning, decides, ah, we have an idea. Let's take this celebration, which we celebrate on May 13th in 609. Let's now transfer it to fall. And we create this huge celebration now. No longer are we afraid of death, but now we proclaim the risen Jesus Christ to you. You no longer have to fear death, you Irish, you Germanic tribes, you Celtic people, you Anglo-Saxons. You no longer have to fear it anymore. In the words, St. Paul beautifully sums it up in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55. Oh, one of the most beautiful texts of all of sacred scripture. St. Paul writing now says, Death, where is your victory? Death, oh, where is your sting? He's saying to them, death, you have no power over me anymore. You have no final say. Because in the beautiful words, now notice in the second letter to the Hebrews today, our second reading. Christ, and I'm quoting Offered once to take away the sins of many. He will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. You see what the author of the Hebrew was saying. He's saying those people who have died, all of our loved ones, they're waiting. They're waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Beautifully on on November 2nd, I drove out to Vinton. You ever go to Vinton? There's a beautiful cemetery there off the side of the road. We call it the uh, the Italian cemetery. Many of our Catholic brothers and sisters are buried there. Many of our parishioners, many of your friends and family are buried there. And I drove there and I zoned on the black vestments of the Holy Mass. And at that cemetery on All Souls Day, I offer the most beautiful prayer the church has to offer, the Holy Mass. And on their tombs, I remembered them. Not just for those buried in Vinton, but those buried here in town, those buried just down the road here, those, all of your loved ones and friends. And that is why in the pews, and here's where your homework assignment comes in. So, We normally have envelopes that say for all souls, because in November, as the church now turns her attention to all of those who have died, I want you to take these home, 
And again, why is the envelope? Include whatever donation you want. Again, the money is not important. I want you to write the names of your loved ones who have died on it. And during this whole month, the entire church, not just our church here in Portola, but the whole worldwide church, all 1.325 billion of us, all of the masses will be offered for them, for our loved ones who are awaiting their eternal reward. We usher them through, and we don't have time to dive into the doctrine of purgatory. I'll save that for another homily. But all of November, we remember. We never forget. This is why, oh, it's so utterly beautiful. When you go to Catholic countries on November 2nd, it is the traditional day that families go to the tombs of their family and friends. Oh, you just... If you just Googled cemeteries November 2nd, you start seeing these beautiful candles, the flowers, and all of this in the deeply rooted Catholic countries. It is the day of the dead. And we remember those who have died because I'm telling you, we never forget. And again, notice now, you notice how during Halloween, we don't on and we, we wear those scary masks. We decorate our homes with, with cobwebs and fake tombs, and we try to scare each other. You know, that's part of our Halloween uh, tradition. Again, oh, that is utterly Catholic. Why? Because we're now, notice this dynamic, because again, there's a lot of misinformation about Halloween, saying it's the devil's birthday, it's about demons. Like, no, at its root, it's about Christ who conquers. We face our greatest fear, which is death, our enemy. It is, our, it is our greatest nemesis, because no matter what we do, as far as we advance in our technology, no matter how hard we try, we're all going to die. Death is our greatest enemy. And on Halloween, notice the Christian ethos. We don't on mask, we wear skeletons, we wear fake blood and makeup. And we're saying, and we're insensitive to what we're doing is, we're saying, death, we're looking at it in its face, and we say, I mock you. I'm making fun of you. That's why I wear a mask, I go to the movies, and I scare myself, and I'm telling you, you have no power over me. Oh, victory or death, where is your victory? Where is your sting? We echo the words of St. Paul. And we stare at it in its face, and we say, oh, death, trick or treat. Give me candy. <laughs> Do you see how we're mocking death? Because of what Christ has done. I want you now to remember this homily. Never forget it. Because as we all know, one day, the person and the people we love the most will die. And that will be a horrible day for us. It will be a terrible, terrible day when our the people we love the most will be on their deathbed. It will happen to all, all of us. We can't stop it. On that day, I want you to remember that you are a Christian. You have been bathed through the waters of baptism. Jesus Christ has shed his blood for our sins. And the tombs no longer has any power over us. No matter how they meet their end, I want you to, on that day, as your tears are flowing from your face, I want you to say, Jesus Christ, come. I glorify your name. Your precious blood is poured on all of us gathered here. And no matter how terrible that day is, remember who you are. That day will no longer have the final word. Turn in your homework assignment. Write the names of those who have died. And in confidence, we will turn to Jesus Christ and entrust our loved ones to his mercy. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.